Yeah. It's that time. Can you believe it already? Look, it's 7 o'clock. You ready? Catch your Bible? All right, I see you got to be jerky. <laughs> you can't have one without the other, brother. Got to have Bible. Because you never know what you're going to learn, especially tonight. Wait to see what the Lord has for you tonight. For all of us. Now, you also know that I learn too, right? Because I've got to study for it and be prepared for it. And tonight, he's going to equip. Because as you know, it's all about motivation evangelism. That's what we talked about last week. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put some bullets in your gun. Okay? We explained why we were doing what we were doing. But tonight, we're going to give you the bullets that you need so that when the opportunity to fire comes, you don't shoot blanks. Have you ever shot an arrow? You've got to aim, don't you? And it has to be just right. You've got to pull back. I only have experience next because I played it on the Wii. <laughs> and you got to wait for the right spot and then <laughs> what good does it do for us just to go <laughs> it's useless I want to teach you how to aim pull back and fire that's what it's all about with confidence and, yes, boldness. and boldness there you go but before we can do that we got to petition heaven we got to prepare our minds for his teaching because it says that a carnal man or a natural man doesn't understand the things of the spirit. So if our day has got us all messed up and our minds are not in him, then our minds are going to be on what we what we what we what we're going to have for dinner after we're done here, or what we're supposed to do tomorrow, or why did we do what we did yesterday, or why did they say what they said? For the next hour, we all need to have one mind through one spirit for one purpose, so that when we're ready and we go out, we're armed. Okay? We're going to take a moment of silent prayer to prepare ourselves. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He, God the Father, is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So if there's anything you've done today, allow Him the opportunity to remind you of what it is, and then we will acknowledge those to Him silently. You don't have to stand up and tell everyone your sins. It's a misunderstood passage. And now we're going to pray. Are you ready to pray, John? We're going to pray, okay? Here we go. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you brought us here tonight to, to learn your word. We thank you for all that you did to provide for our needs to be here. We now ask that through the Holy Spirit that you will give us wisdom and discernment beyond understanding that the passages that we go over tonight will be so crystal clear that when you open up the opportunity to present the gospel to those that are lost, that we will have all the information we need to give it to them. It's real simple. Your gospel is simple. People today need your gospel. Many are running around here thinking they're saved. They don't even know what it takes to be saved. And so thank you for this opportunity we have that we have to read your word and to come together as one body to prepare ourselves for the future in this town and for this neighborhood. We thank you so much and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Words have more than one meaning. Words have more than one meaning. Sunday, I think I made an illustration, or one of the days, Wednesday or Sunday, that if I said I was, 50 years ago, if I said, oh, I'm just feeling gay today, it would be misunderstood today what that meant. If, if I went up to Moses and said, man, Moses, you're bad, he'd go, what did I do? He doesn't understand. There's a language barrier. Even in the English, there are words such as saved, faith, works, believe, that have more than one meaning. It's very important for you to know that. So when we read a scripture, we're going to start in Ephesians. When we're, we're going to open up one scripture, just one, and we're going to rightly divide that one passage First, the first thing we're going to do, 
so that you can understand how one word, if it's misunderstood, can mess up an entire country. One word, one little word could mess up an entire denomination. They can run on one word thinking it means one thing, but when you go back to the original, which is when it was written, see, you gotta go, anytime you read a passage, you have to think about two things. One, when was it written, and who is it written to? If you do that with every passage, it's called context, some have been taught that you look at a couple passages before and a couple passages after. But the real context of any passage is its book. And within that book, what is its context in the entire Bible? It's a larger view. So we're going to look at one passage tonight. We're going to start on, I have many others, so don't misunderstand me. <laughs> we're starting with one because it's the most important one. And what I want you to do, I want to challenge you tonight. I want to give you homework. Because if you're home, no work. <coughs> and if you're not home and you're not doing the work you're supposed to do at home, then things don't work. The fact is when you're home, what are you supposed to do? Take care of the home, spend time with family, but I need you to do me a favor. I need you to open up some time every day this week, whether it's in the morning or at night. Everything okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You're just getting out of the camera. I'm getting out of the camera. How do I get out of a camera? <laughs> <laughs> they still hear me, I assure you. But the point is, is I, 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 I can't force you. I can't beg you because I'm not a beggar. But I really want to petition you today to go home. Write down these scriptures that I give you. And I want you to read them. And I want you to read them. And read them until you just until it makes you ill. Because I really want you to have these in you so that when time comes and someone says, Well, wait a second, doesn't the Bible say this? And you're going to be able to say, No, this is what the Bible says. Now, some of you, if you write in your Bible, that's fine. If you want to write on a pad, it's up to you. But I'm just telling you, this is going to be absolutely paramount to what we're going to do in the future. Thank you, Lord, for coffee. Thank you, Eric, for making it. Hebrews. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Ephesians, chapter 2. Now, in our spiritual life, if you were to go from birth, to death, and you were able to look at your spirit, your life, what you'll find was you had a natural birth, <laughs> and if you've accepted Christ, you have a spiritual birth. Some people think once you're saved, that's it. You're good to go, and that's it. But the fact is, that's just the beginning of your spiritual life. You're on a spiritual journey, and it starts at salvation. What happens after salvation? Well, we know that maturity happens, but we have to understand the moment of salvation because many of us don't understand it. Once we understand salvation, then you get to go home tonight with a book. It's called God's Plan After Salvation. People are not taught what happens after salvation. They think it's automatic. Well, I became a new creature, so that's it. But I can tell you firsthand, after I got saved, the very next night I blew it. And I thought, well, they're having another meeting tomorrow night. I better go back because it didn't work the first time. And that in itself, huh? That's condemnation, man. I mean, when you messed up after salvation, thank you. <laughs> Ephesians 2, that's right. That's exactly, that's it. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Now, we're going to read this differently than we've ever read any passage before. Because in the past, the style of teaching that I've done has been centered around words and topics. But this time we're going to take a passage and we're going to rightly divide it. And how we as laymen can do that is we just we don't read it like it's a recipe on Facebook. Four cups of sugar, three cups of flour, four cups of water, and here it is. Because you're missing something. You're missing components in this passage. Now look at what it says. Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace, by what? Grace. grace. You've been saved. Who's been saved? Me. You have been saved. You've been what? Saved. Through what? 
faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not as a result of works that no one should boast. Now, that passage includes two words, saved and faith. I want to talk about those for one second. The word saved, if I'm, if I'm swimming in a pool and I start to drown and Eric dives in and he saves me and I get out and I say, oh brother, thank you for saving me. And someone thinks that there was just a baptism. <laughs> they missed it, didn't they? Because there's more than one meaning for the word saved. In this context, it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. The word saved in the Greek is sozo. S-O-Z-O. -O. There's at least four different meanings for the word saved. One is relating to salvation, which is from the lake of fire. That's what this passage is talking about. You go back and sozo, it points in, your, in my keyword to salvation. The second meaning of it means to rescue from physical danger. Has nothing to do with spiritually. Nothing. That passage you'll find in Acts 27.3. So I want you to go back and read these passages so you'll see for yourself. We're not going to go home tonight because we don't have time. But I want you to go back and see for yourself. So there's four kinds of saved. At least one of salvation, which is the eternal lake of fire, which is Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. The second is to rescue from physical danger, Acts 27, 31. And then I want you, the third one is deliverance from premature physical death. Remember the passage that we talked about on Mother's Day? About you have to honor your mother and father so your days are prolonged. Prolonged from what? An early death? God will take you out. He has the right to do that. He gave you life. Nashama. Breath of life. He can remove it. That's James 121 and 519 through 20. And the last one, the weaning of sozo, is to restore. To bring back. I'll go over them again so we got it. And that's James 5.15. So the first one is saved, means salvation from eternal lake of fire. That's Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. The second is to rescue from physical danger, Acts 27.31. The third is deliverance from premature physical death. That's James 1.21 and James 5.19 through 20. And the fourth is to restore, to bring back, to reinstate James 5, 15. If you go back on your own and you read those passages, you'll understand. There's different types. But what do we do as pastors? We pull up a passage and we throw it out there. But do they think about what they're throwing out there? Some do. Some have done the research. Some don't. They just throw it out there. Faith without works is dead. <clears throat> But faith without works is dead means biblical knowledge without application is useless. If you look at James 2.15, it says if a man's without food, what do you do? They give him some money. You don't say, I'm praying for you. That's not application. Application is extending your hand. The word faith, because it says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. In the Bible, faith is used all over the place. But did you know that there's more than one meaning for the word faith? Have you ever tried to explain to someone who's an unbeliever what faith means? What's faith? Well, faith is the sum of the things hoped for, things not seen. They go, what? They don't understand that because they have a natural mind. A great application of faith is this. When I sit in this chair, I have faith that it's going to hold me. My faith is in an object. So I sit down, my faith is in the chair. Well, I don't have very strong faith sometimes because of the object. This could break. This is man-made, right? But if faith is in the object of Jesus Christ, he won't break. 
But if we come to him as a child, as a child, we, the child won't think about that. That's correct. So then what? Child has more. We to come to Christ as a child. Like a mustard seed, right? So even this much faith gets you salvation. Well, there's one, two, three, four meanings from the, at least four. There's about twelve, but we're going to go over four, the main ones. Faith means trust or confidence. That's one meaning of the word pistis, which is the Greek word for faith. So in some applications when you see the word faith, it means trust or confidence. Hebrews 2.13 is a perfect example of that. Hebrews 2.13. The next word for faith or pistis is believe. It means to believe. Acts 16.31, Deuteronomy 1.32. The third mean uh, 132. So the first one is trust, confidence, Hebrews 2.13. The second for faith means believe, Acts 16.31 and Deuteronomy 1.32. The third meaning for faith or pistis is faithful or reliability. That's in 1 Corinthians 1 9. And Lamentations 3.23. I'm just giving you examples so when you go back and you read these passages, you'll see how the word faith has different applications, not just one. But I know we all think, well, faith is one, that's it, but it's not. It was written to have multiple meanings. But the unfortunate part is in the English language. Unless you have a keyword Bible, you would never know that. How would you know that? That's why we have pastors. God brings us to a keyword Bible and says, learn the original, you're going to pick up something. And that's when you look back and go, oh, because some passages are gray. They're not black or white. And you don't understand. But you have never been taught that if you don't understand a passage, there has to be a meaning. There's no contradictions in the Bible. So if there's no contradictions, that means there's an extra meaning. That's why God gives pastors. For that reason, that's our responsibility. And the fourth and final, or fourth meaning, but there's multiple ones, but this one of, of faith or pistis means biblical truth, beliefs, or doctrines. James 2.14, biblical truth, beliefs, or doctrines. James 2.14 and Jude 1.3. I'm only starting on two words tonight, saved and faith, because those are the main ones that we're going to going to touch on in a bunch of other passages. A lot of people don't understand. If someone were to say to you, can you give me a scripture in the Bible that I can get to that has to do with when someone, ex or, or, or how do you accept Christ, or, or what does it take to be saved? Now everyone knows John 3.16. I didn't even include that in this study. Give me another one. Do you see? Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, lest any man should boast. Let's think about this passage. But you see, right there. Everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So you've memorized that one. Fabulous. I've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to give you today. Okay? So besides John, you know, John 3.16 is included in there. I'm going to give you 8 more. Now, i got to give them because you've got to understand. But before we get to that, we've got to go through this. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith. Does anybody know what grace means? Undeserved favor. Undeserved favor. That's Unmerited. right. Mm -hmm. Unmerited, undeserved. What did you do to earn it? Nothing. That's what that means. It says for you've been saved. You didn't have to do anything. I did all the work. By grace. Through faith. And that not of yourselves. Why would God find it so important for us to have not of yourselves? Maybe because he knows us. 
It's all about me. He's saying, but it's not about you. Nothing. None of it. Sorry. Did you stand there on the cross with me when I took your sins? Nope. But through faith, by grace, you have been saved. That's a fact. Argue all you want. It says, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works. Period. Not your salvation has nothing to do with your work because you didn't do it to begin with. People actually, am I good enough now to go to heaven? Okay, am I good enough now? That's totally unbiblical. 80% of the people, when I ask, are you going to heaven? They say, I hope so. Have you ever been guilty of saying that? The only reason why you said hope so is because someone taught you the hope so salvation message. But the Bible says it is written that you may know so. But the enemy wants you to hope. Oh, you better hope. He loves you. You want to be like him, don't you? Well, you better keep working. I don't think so. The Bible, it is written, for by grace I've been saved. Yeah. Oh, but you've got to knock on 20 doors. If he comes back tomorrow and you didn't hit that 20th door, you're through. That's unbiblical. Not by works. So that no one may boast. No one. That includes you. Now that passage should be enough, shouldn't it? And we're finished, right? And that's it. But guess what? Are you going to memorize Ephesians 2, 8 through 9? Tomorrow? By 10 o'clock? Heck no! I still haven't memorized it. it takes time. Let's go, to, <laughs> let's go to a book that you rarely go to. Hosea. It's the one that's stuck together. <laughs> but uh, faith comes from, uh, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Yeah, that's a passage in the Bible. But, what does that have to do with salvation? Faith, faith in Jesus comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, but so is spiritual maturity. Because without a preacher, right? Without a preacher, how did you hear it? So yes, it's by the ears. It's acknowledged. It's saying yes, by hearing. Hosea. Chapter 4. Verse 6. Eric, read that one for us. Hosea 4, 6. <laughs> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be also no priest to me. Right there. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. When I ask the question, what other passages do you know on, on Scripture? There wasn't any hands raised because of knowledge. But by the time we leave tonight, you're going to be able to say, well, this passage has to do with salvation, and this passage has to do, and we are not destroyed because of lack of knowledge. God has given you a teacher to give you the knowledge. You just have to, in faith, by hearing, hearing the word of God, thank you for that passage, came okay, to perfect timing, know what it says. That's why you've got now, just so you know, a bunch of these past scriptures are going to be in these two books that I give you tonight. So you will have them, but still write them down. Don't go lazy on me yet. I don't like to mention that, right? Get close then. All of a sudden they stop writing. Let's go to John 3.36. Here's your first passage. Write down John 3.36. You can even write this in the front of your Bible on one of those blank pages. You know why it's blank? It's for you can write notes. 
These are all centered. These are these are your salvation passages. John three thirty six. John three thirty six. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. Stop. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. What's the requirement? Believe. believe. He who believes in the Son and tithes $50 a week has eternal life. No. He that believes and be baptized has eternal life. No. He who believes and who stumps his feet and dances around. No, it's he who believes has eternal life. Period. Believes. Believes. Very important. No works lest any man should boast. He who believes. What? In what? In the Son. <coughs> well, I believe that God is God. Well, that's great. But do you believe that Jesus is Christ? That's the difference. Oh, Jesus was a good man. He washed people's windows. That's what I believe. Well, guess what? It says, but, anytime you see the word but, get ready. But, he who does not obey the Son shall not see life. Not obey believe. if, thank you, believe. Exactly right. Go back to the original, you'll find it yourself. Shall not see life. Why won't he see life? Where's life? Through the Son. We really don't get life, eternal life, unless we believe. The life that's returning, referring here <coughs> is eternal life. If you lose your life, what happens? You gain it. Same concept. If you bear your cross, now you can live. When Jesus, when it was too heavy for Jesus to carry... You really think it was too heavy for Jesus to carry the cross? No, nope. it was a test for this man who was sitting on the side. And what happened? They said, help him. Oh, if I help him, they're going to put me up on it. He didn't care. He went and he bared, he bared his cross. Whose cross? Jesus' cross. When we choose him and we give up our life to serve him, we're picking up his cross. Same thing. That's it. But the wrath of God, look, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. What is the wrath? Opposite of eternal life. It's eternal damnation in the lake of fire. If you don't believe, you can't have eternal life. It's that simple. Nowhere does this passage, before, beginning, or after, mention anything about eternal life. Matter of fact, in the book of John, when it comes to salvation, sin is never the topic. Believe exists 98 times in the book of John. Believe. Now let's go to John 8. So, John 3.36, write that down. You already know 3.16? Write down 3.36 and just, he who believes in the Son, he who believes in the Son shall have eternal life. He who believes in the Son shall have eternal life. How do you have eternal life? Believe. Believe in the Son. Pretty straightforward. Why do we complicate it? Well, you've got to do these five things. <laughs> you've got to click your heels three times and say there's no place like home. I mean, that's basically what they're telling you to do. It's not biblical. Believe in the Son and you will have eternal life. Case closed. Period. Over and out. Yo, praise God. He's such a simple God, isn't he? He loves us so much. Let's go to John 8, 24. If I'm hurting any one of your ears by getting excited, I apologize. I'm fired up. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because it's so simple. You're fine. Keep going. Here we go. John 8, 24. I said therefore to you that you shall die in your sins. For unless you believe, believe oh, here it is again, that I am he. That who is he? That Jesus is the Christ. That he's the son. You shall die in your sins. 
Over and out. Does it mention anything else anywhere about anything else uh, as a requirement? It doesn't. Believe. Oh, it can't be that simple. Why? It's okay to ask why if someone says it can't be that simple. Why? Here we go. John 20. Keep going. Here's John again. Gotta love John. John 20. So there was, we got John 3.36, John 8.24, and John 20.31. I heard a mmm. You see? It's so clear, isn't it? But yet they only threw one and then they just read the last. I'm seeing, well, I'm not, we're ahead already here. we got to slow down. Look at that. John 20, 31. But these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. We're not done. Go to Acts 16. There, there's a whole lot more, but I wanted to get the ones that are clear, not gray. Because someone says, oh, it says believe and be baptized. Baptized means and be identified. <gasps> what? How could that be? Yeah, Acts uh, 16, 31. That's a whole other story. But there's seven baptisms. But anyway, we won't go into that tonight. There's what? Acts 16.31. Here's the jailer. I've used this one a few times. Acts 16.31 And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your household. Amen. Okay, go back to John. I'm having fun. John 1. Verse 12. I had to go back because we're going to take you one more just to have fun. John 1, 12. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God even to those who believe in his name. Ooh. Now go to 3.16. Oh, everyone knows this one. Who can say this one? Me. What is it? Any questions? I know we all know that one. Let's go to Acts 4.12. Acts is one book that if you don't go back to the original language, one denomination grabbed hold of the book of Acts and ran with it without even knowing the original language and made doctrines and built, built churches on it. It's amazing what one book will do. Acts 4.12 And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. What's that name? Jesus Christ. And how do you become saved? By believing in Him. Believing what? That He is Christ. He's the Messiah. That the work that He did on the cross was good enough for eternal life. Let's go to Romans. Chapter 6. They always pull this first part out and forget the second part. That's how slick the enemy is. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. But. 
Ah. Here it is again. But, <laughs> but, the free gift of God is eternal life. Free? Wait, I don't have to pay for it? I don't have to work for it? No, it's free. Free is free. We have to accept it, though. It says believe. Believing is accepting. It's acknowledging. When the thief on the cross, that's like people who say, well, you got to make him Lord. When did he not become Lord? What gives you, you can make him Lord? He's already Lord. It's when you acknowledge that he's Lord. Amen. That you acknowledge that he's God. People go, well, Jesus isn't God. Yeah, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, and the Word became flesh. And dwelt among us. Emmanuel. It says in the manual. It's a perfect transition every time. It just flows so smoothly. But the free gift of God. It's free. You don't have to work anymore. When it comes to salvation. But they say, no, that no, you can't stop there. You gotta keep working for it. No, you didn't work for it to get it. Belief is not a work. It's not the free gift of God. If I said, I'm going to give you $100, come to my house. Okay, you come to my house. I said, do me a favor, cut my lawn. That's not free. You worked for it. It's a reward. <laughs> this says a free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a doctrine a teaching that you can lose your salvation. Very sensitive subject. Very. You know why? Because for the lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. They won't read for themselves. They've been told, well, you can lose it. How can you lose something you didn't earn to begin with? Just get robbed of your blessings. <laughs> but you didn't earn those. Those are given by grace. If it was good enough for him, if the free gift of God was good enough for you to have eternal life, everything else is a bonus. What more is there than eternal life? Yeah? What about like when they say you have to say that prayer and accept Jesus into your heart? When who says? I don't know. I've always heard it that way. What? I've always heard it that way. Have you ever read that anywhere? I don't know. Have you ever... Can someone grab me a passage right now that says, I invited Jesus into my heart and I got saved? The Roman 4 says confession of the mouth brings unto salvation. That, 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 that confession of the mouth? What did you confess? That you believe that Jesus is the Christ. Back to the same board again. There is not one passage that said, did Moses invite Jesus in his heart? No. What's your heart? The mind you believed. That's... I'm not saying it's wrong for someone to say, well, you can invite Jesus in your heart today. Even though no one said it in the Bible... Not one person in the Bible said, if you invite Jesus into your heart, you will be saved. All those passages I gave you said believe. See, one man took that doctrine. Took that belief. Remember I said the word faith? Also means believe. Someone's faith believed that you could invite Jesus anywhere. He says, come to me. I'm sorry, who gave the invitation? You actually think you can invite Jesus to go somewhere. He goes where he wants to go. He says, come to me. You come to me. I'm not coming to you, but it says the Holy Spirit draws you again. He's doing it. What gave us the right to think we can do anything? We can't. I heard, I heard it once said that we must believe that he rose in three days from the dead, or if he, we don't believe that he was rose in heaven, we believe that we can be risen. 
Are we risen physically or spiritually? Spiritually. Why? Because of what we did or what he did? What he did. Same thing. It goes back to, you'll find when anybody time anybody says, well, I heard that I can invite him and I can, I can, I can, I can. It ain't about you. He did it. For by grace you've been saved through faith. It is a gift of God. Lest any man should boast. I could just stand up here and just repeat that for an hour. What would I do? Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32.4. Time is slipping by already. But the gospel is uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy. 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 32.4. Let me ask you a question. Was Jesus resurrected when the thief got, got received salvation? No. Do a word study on that. Uh, seriously. Recognizing that the work that he did on the cross was good enough for eternal life is what it takes to believe that Jesus is the Christ. What that means is, is that he died for your sins and was resurrected. That's what that means. Before crucifixion and after. There was pre, post, and after. Because it happened after too. But anyway, Deuteronomy 32. These passages, write down, these are all the passages that have to do with your salvation being secured. That you cannot lose your salvation. You can lose a lot of other things, but not your salvation. Let the word speak for itself. 32, 4. The rock, his work is perfect. If his work is perfect, what is his work? What he did on the cross for our sins, it's perfect. You can't improve upon it. I hate to tell you that, but you can't. For all his ways are just. A, faithful of, uh, a God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. His work is perfect. His work is perfect. For anybody to say they can lose their salvation, that means you're saying his work is not perfect. I'm sorry, Christ, got to get off the cross. It's not good enough. Come on. No, 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 no. Get back on here. No, it wasn't good enough. That's a joke. His work is perfect. Look at Isaiah 51. That was Old Testament too, wasn't it? Can I ask a question, please? Sure. I don't want to interrupt you very long. No problem. I noticed here in the scripture you just read that it says, He is the rock. Is that, would that be one of his names that he's given us here? Absolutely. He's a foundation. Well, obviously it's capitalized. So. Yeah. It's a foundation. Your rock is a foundation. Isaiah 51, 6. Lift up your eyes to the sky. Then look to the earth beneath. For the sky will vanish like smoke and the earth will wear out like a garment. And all inhabitants will die in like manner. But my salvation shall be temporary because you messed up. Forever. Whoa. It's forever. His salvation is forever. His work is perfect. Why can they make forever temporary? Next one, Psalm 3. Oh boy. Psalm 3. Verse 8. Read that, Eric. Anybody who has it? 3 8. Psalm 3 8. Nice and loud. 
Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. To who? The Lord. Who holds salvation? And you think you can snatch it away because you're a little poopy little heir? I don't think so. Salvation belongs to the Lord and His work is perfect and it lasts forever. Ooh, gotta love that. Oh, people will want to argue with this. They will. They'll want to argue until their face is purple, but their argument's with the Lord. This is what this is the passage you can show them when they argue. Psalm 119, 89. One nineteen eighty nine. Notice the first word. Who oh, is good? It, it it you can't debunk even the first word of this passage. When someone sees it, read it. Forever, O Lord. Forever. 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 Your word is settled in heaven. Whoa! Thank you. If his word says, "I have salvation." and it lasts forever, it's settled. You want to argue with man, and you want to think that you, you can't even change it. You can think. You can spend the rest of your life thinking you're not going to heaven. Is that going to change God's plan? No. Why? It's perfect. John 1. John 128. I think we can agree I didn't write this, right? Okay. Wait. No, John 4, I'm sorry. John 428. 413. Look at this. Oh, this is good. <clears throat> John 13, John 3, 13, 4, 13, 4, 13, I'm sorry. 4, 13 says, Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Oh, but I'm thirsty again. How could you be? If the water he gave you, he says you'll never thirst again. Again, never again. Never. Never. Never again. No more thirst. You were thirsty, he gave you water. You're good. John 6. 39. And this is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing. But raise it up on the last day. All of us who believe, he's not going to lose one of us. He's going to raise us up in the last day. That's what the Bible says. He says here, I lose nothing. You're part of that nothing. Isn't it cool to be something? Because he's not going to lose you. John 10. Notice the believe, the believe, the believe, the believe, and forever, 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 forever in the same book. Not a coincidence. John 10, 28. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is the one that when you tell... Those that don't believe, you can, they can't argue this one. It's so, they really can't argue any of them, but they will. Oh, but you could fall away. You could be like a branch and break. And they're applying passages that have nothing to do with salvation. Forgive them, for they do not know. My brothers are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. <laughs> Here we go, John 10, 28. Read that one. Somebody. I give, go ahead. <laughs> I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Stop. Who's I? Uh, Jesus. 
I give eternal life. Who gives eternal life? Jesus. And how many will perish? None. And they shall never perish. And no one shall snatch them out of my hand. No one. No one. Never perish. Ne never. Never. You're not going to perish. No one can snatch you out of his hands. Why? He's God. And who holds salvation? God. Snatch it out of his hand. Try. He said no one can. No one means no one. No one. Sorry, devil. You can't snatch me out of his hand. <laughs> no one. <clears throat> Never perish. Never. We're not done. Romans 8. I have one guy who still this day likes to call me and throw passages. I'll say, I'm sorry, but never. No one. Sorry. Oh, but how about? No. Never. No one. Including that. Here we go. Romans 8.38. Oh, this is one that gets them every time. Oh, have you heard it? Well, if you kill yourself, you're going to hell. Really? The Bible says, and if you want to argue with the Bible, go ahead. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Not even death. Just because somebody loses hope has nothing to do with their salvation. Nothing. Are you trying to tell me that since you believe you've never been let down? Of course you have. But not even death can separate you from his love. Some people are not strong. Some people quit. But what does that have to do from the moment that they accepted Christ? That they stood and said, I believe that you are who you say you are. Now, what if, what if he wasn't taught to grow in grace? What if he was in kindergarten after that and never matured? Does it change that moment? No, the work is perfect. Some say, well, maybe he didn't believe to begin with. Well, who are we to judge? We don't know. But the fact is, it says if we believe, we have eternal life. And not even death can separate you from his love. If you want to believe, if you really want to believe that you can lose your salvation, you have that right. But you're going to be highly disappointed when he says, well done, my faithful servant. You're going to go, uh-oh. I was wrong. But he gives it to us now. We don't have to wait to know that. It says here, look at the next one. You think I'm done? We're not. We're five minutes. I can pull a lot out in five minutes. <laughs> Go to uh, Romans 11. One page over, 29. Now, I know some of you, this is really messing with you because you've been taught that by works you've been saved. And it's simply not what the Bible says. Even if we leave here and we agree to disagree, if you never come back again because you really think that you can take away your own salvation, I'm not going to love you any less. If you really think you did it yourself, you have that right. I can't, I can't argue with you. I'm not going to argue with God, though. Romans 8.38. I'm sorry, 11.29. Okay, I don't walk on the water, thank you. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. irrevocable. Sorry, you can't get rid of it. Well, what if I stop serving it? Well, if you're a schmuck, it's not your fault. It doesn't mean you're smart. I know that's a little extreme. I'm sorry. But the fact is, if you really think that you're, I'm not going to serve him anymore. You want to be stubborn? Go ahead. He'll snap your neck. I don't mean physically. He'll put you in suffering like you don't know until you come back. Amen, brother. Yeah. Been there, done that, and we'll cut the head. You know, God, I just don't buy this. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I know what it says, but 
Oh, I've got to have some control of this. Really? Job, did he question God? His friends did. You've got to be doing something, Job. There's no reason why God would be cursing you if you did nothing. Really? He was doing everything right. He was being tested. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1. I know this is for some. I know it's... it's It probably goes against a lot of things you've been taught. And that's it's okay. Because I'm teaching you too. And if these words, these English words that you've read, if just one of them haven't made sense, let me know. I think they're pretty clear. But it messes with you because you've been taught so long. You've been told so many things. And you you and now all of a sudden you're being told something different. I'm confused. Are you really confused or does it actually make sense now? Because I said it? All I've done is give you scripture. There is no commentary here. All scriptures. 121 through 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us in God who also sealed us, sealed, and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Here's the hearts. Sorry, the word hearts means mind. <laughs> sealed. You're sealed. We're not done with the word sealed. Let's go to Ephesians 1. If God seals something, can it be unsealed? Go to work. Ephesians 1. <clears throat> 13. <clears throat> 13 through 14. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed in him, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, God breaks His promises now. You're sealed by a promise. <clears throat> Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with the view of the redemption of God's own possession. Whose possession? God's. Salvation belongs to who? The Lord. His work is what? Perfect. Pretty clear. I love it. To the praise of his glory. Imagine that. Man gets upset because now they can't take the glory. Man wants the glory. We had 25 people saved today. And you saved them? God saved 25 people today. See the difference? There's something wrong about being excited. But he shares his glory with no one. And when people count noses and hands and all this other stuff, if you'll notice, any time I say how many people there were, it says 36 people came to hear God's word today. Pretty clear. Not my word. I'm just the donkey he used. And many of you can call me in if you like. See, I was good. I didn't do what I wanted to. I'm getting better. I'm like a fine wine. I get better with age. <laughs> Let's go to Ephesians 3. We're almost done. Oh boy, we're at 8. Forgive me in advance. Hey, I've done pretty good, Anne. Have I not these last couple times? I'm doing pretty good. Now, I, I'm, yeah. I'm with you, brother, but sometimes people have things to go to, and I've I got to be respectful of their time. But in our case, if, if anybody needs to leave, feel free. I think you've been given enough. School's out. Ephesians, oh, good. Where's that other page? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Ephesians 
For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. For this reason, all that you've learned, it's in reverence for Him, for what He does, not what we do. Please remember that. We bow our knees to Him because He's worthy to be praised. Why? Because good music? No. Because good teaching? No. Because He's already done it all. I'm just the next generation. I'm just this generation. I'm this generation's pastor. You can see, he, and his work is perfect. And you look at me and I am not perfect. But he's faithful. And that's why we have reverence for him. Because of all that he's done for us. Go to Ephesians um, 4.30. He's speaking to believers here. 430, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Is the day of redemption tomorrow? Maybe. But you're sealed all the way up until that time. Guaranteed, no breakage. Sealed. No soul salvation. It's no so, that's right. Not hope so. Hebrews 10.10, 10, and we're finished. Hebrews 10.10. 10. This is it. If you want to argue with this one, good luck. By this will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once. Once. So at that moment that you accepted Christ, I said, but pastor, now what? How many people graduated? How many people graduated? Are you staying where you are? Where are you going? You're advancing to the next level, right? Advance with me. Advance with me. Advance with me. Advance with me. Today you just graduated. Advance with me. 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 Ah, uh, 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 you're getting one too, son. Good. Have another one. Give it to someone else. Okay. Advance with me. God's plan after salvation. It's a really easy book to read, I promise. Remember what I said a lighthouse is? What was the lighthouse? It's a beacon of light, right? Watch this. Your neighbors are going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> It's crystal clear. 
believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will have eternal life. If you ask someone, are you going to heaven? And they say, I hope so. Say, it is written that you will know so. Once again, let's go over that. Okay? Are you going to heaven? I hope so. It is written that you know so. It is written that you know so. It is written that you know so. Say it with me, son. It is written that you know so. If that's the only thing you say, you've done it. That's why it's called good news. If the guy stand there with the beard and the bomb, say you don't have to quit that. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Oh, but no, he's holding the beer. He might put it down once he gets saved. Or maybe he has one. <gasps> He'll go to hell. Will he? <laughs> How do you go to hell? How do you go to hell? Not believing. How do you get to heaven? <coughs> By believing. It's that simple. I hate to be so melodramatic, but it's true. You don't have to know the whole Bible to give the gospel. Just know ten words. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be, uh oh, eleven, saved. <laughs> if that's the only thing you know, that's the only thing Paul said to the jailer. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And your household. And your household too. Now, for those of you that are convinced you can lose your salvation, here's a book on, it's called Eternal Security of the Believer. It has the passages that I told you about. It's a very little book, but it's a powerful book. The Lion of Judah. Whoa. Very powerful. The real lion, the one you should be afraid of. Not the false lion. In uh, John 3, uh, 14, uh -huh. it says, And Moses lifted up the serpent. In the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And Moses was what? That whosoever believed in mm -hmm. him shall not perish, but have ever eternal life. Same result. Yeah. <laughs> every way you go, I've heard them all. That's They've come to me with every possible. Oh, but it says, uh, repent and be saved. Yeah, change your mind. No, it says repent. Well, repent means change your mind. You don't believe that Jesus is who we say it is. If you believe that he is, you'll have eternal life. Come on, bring it to me. I'll keep coming with the same thing forever. Forever. Once and for all. It's so clear. But the enemy creates deception. Makes us want to believe that it's temporary. Now, these are not temporary. I guarantee you. These will perish by 2 or 3 in the morning. These aren't mine, but... Whosoever they are, what are they doing here sitting like this? <laughs> That's dangerous. I even I. I don't steal, but. <laughs> First John 1 right. 9, if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive <laughs> He knows my heart. Well, in Ephesians 2 uh, 8 and 9, I like what Tim says here. For, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ. Uh, Christ. Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Who do the work? Jesus. Now, once we get saved, what this book is going to share with you is now what? Now you grow in His grace, you get in His Word, and you apply what you learn. And it's a maturity process. When you go through the car wash, do you start at the end? No. Where do you start? In the middle. <laughs> I love this thing. <laughs> Everything you do has a beginning, does it not? Your job had a beginning. Your school has a beginning. When you shower, there's a beginning. Now, some children don't wash their hair, but then it begins to smell. The point is, is that everything we do once we're saved from that moment, it's just the beginning. It's not the end. 
people have been told that once you're saved, that's it. But it's not. It's just the beginning of your relationship with God. You really don't even know Him, do you? Think about it. When you go back, you were a year ago, right? What did you know about Him a year ago compared to what you know now? Is it because all of a sudden you rubbed a genie and you got the knowledge? No. What did you have to do? Bear your cross daily, didn't you? By putting down the things that you normally did, you fasted. You didn't starve yourself to death. You starved yourself of the world. That's a whole other issue in itself. Someday we'll go there. Still dying yourself daily. Daily. Trust me. I have a flesh and a sin nature that would scare you to... <laughs> the devil's all, the devil's all about the birds. Right, Judy? He wants to the birds into the world things. If you want to know about my side of my flesh, there's one person you go to. Her. She'll tell you all about that side of me. If you have ever put me on a pedestal, knock it off, please, because I don't belong on it. That's why I really don't ever want a church that has a stage. I never like that. I'm big enough as is. I don't need to be bigger. It ain't about me. It's about mm -hmm. Jesus. You're loud enough to... Phew, no mic, huh? <laughs> so, let me ask you a question. Next Wednesday, you think you're ready to go out? I don't have the trifolds yet. We can't. When the trifolds come, the, the moment we have the trifolds, we're going out. And when we go out, let me ask you, the first time I mentioned about going out, were you a little nervous about that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you still nervous about that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That was you, right? Mm -hmm. Miss Boldness, I see on your Facebook how you go around knocking on people's doors all the time on Facebook. Oh, but you can do that. Why? Because you're behind a computer? Mm -hmm. Great. We'll put one in front of you. Yeah. You can knock on their door. <laughs> Are you going to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going by yourself. Uh, they born again. All, all things so you become a, You know, it says... Yeah, at the moment of salvation, that's when you become born again. When you believe. All things become new. What all things are they referring to? I guess all your old sins. Nature See, they take all things and think the moment they're saved, they're going to be perfect. That's not even true. It's not even possible. The all things it's referring to is all things that are attached to your spiritual life. Born again is when you believe. How about Nicodemus, who was the teacher of all teachers? He said, I could be born again. How can I be born again? How can I be born in my mother's womb? Yet out of his same mouth, he said, we know you're different. We know you're from God because of the things that you're doing. So we recognized him. Yet in the same breath, he said, well, how can I be born again? Why do you come to him at night? Why do you come to him at night? Why do you come during the day? Because, uh, the darkness the because then the show Nick at Night would never have any meaning. <laughs> That's a joke. He came at night because he didn't want all the others to see what he was doing. Why? Was he ashamed? No. Because he was the teacher of all teachers. Even Jesus said to him, are you not the teacher of all the teachers and you don't understand what I'm saying? He said that for our benefit. And even Nicodemus. Oh, my ring just went clang. I thought my Bible was there. I'm gonna... Sorry for that. I'm sorry. You're in the front row, too. You're getting full Perry today. <laughs> she's she's going to have nightmares for half her days. Shower. <laughs> but take these examples of what we're learning. And we're going to use them. Are you stretching or do you have a question? I have a question. Okay, hold on a second. Take all these things that you've learned. Go home. I'm going to put this document on the website. I'll even do that. I'll even have the video on there that you can share, which some of you, by the way, have shared already. <laughs> Y'all are doing it. Because it isn't about, it's about what well, they're, how, isn't it, let me ask you a question. How long have you been in church? How many years? Four? Four years? How long have you been in church here? 
My grandpa was a Baptist preacher, so I went to church for a long time, but I got way, way, way away. But you've been going to church for what, about 20 years? <laughs> I'm being kind. Well, no. Probably. Actually, I just started going back about, what, three or four years ago? About four years ago. About four years ago. But have you wondered why at this time, why everything is so clear? And why it wasn't so clear back then? Have you ever thought about that? Since you since February. As I said, have you gone back to your Facebook page? No, I'm not yet. Go back to your Facebook page, see what you spewed. <laughs> and look at what you spew now. It's incredible. It's not because of me. It's because of what God and his plan for your life is. This man's been mm -hmm. waiting for this to come, and it's come. Much more than he ever dreamed or thought. But it has nothing to do with us. It's what God's doing. This is just the beginning. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Did I count you? I counted 19. You counted 19? Including you. Huh? Including you. Including me. Did you count Carolyn? Yes, I did. Carolyn. And John? Okay, good. So we have, so we have 19. 12 changed the world. What do you think 19 are going to do? Change Facebook? We are. We're killing them. We're blasting them with truth. More if you, I wish I could have like, a, I'm, I'm going to suggest this to Facebook. I wish I had a Sparta Bible Church that had a hierarchy of all just our members and all that we've done to take what we've learned and spread it. If you can do it on Facebook, why can't we do it here? Mm -hmm. We can. It's going to be really easy. I'm telling you, the moment we get out there, and, and, and Judy three times has already said, let's go, because she's just ready to show me up. I know she will, too. <laughs> because I made the comment about, well, her being a senior citizen, that's just irritating. You know, you know, like, and I apologize. I love you with all my heart. You know that. I had no disrespect. I was just trying to be respectful because I didn't want to put her on the spot. But she said, I'll walk you. She just clearly challenged me. So her and I are going to be secretly, one house, two house. How you get it? Yeah, I got 12. She'll say, that, this is my second page. Thank you. He's, he's afraid I'm going to call him and say, you know, that is Jesus. <laughs> And listen, if that's what she does and they get saved, it's not my business. Because she does everything for his will. If he tells her to do that, she's going to do it. No matter what I say here, no matter what I teach her, Judy's going to do what she's going to do. That statement, the only can't teach an old dog new tricks, that applies all but God. He's the only one who can teach that dog new tricks. And she learns all kinds every day. Because we remain teachable for his glory, for his purpose, for his plan. Okay. Any questions? What's a trifle? What's a trifle? Excellent question. It's a piece of paper. Full in three. Let's try. Isn't that sixfold? Because there's six sides. No, there is double sides, but it's only folded once. It's a trifle. Three folds. One, two, three. Okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Try. Then what's the back? It's on there also, but it's only one fold. You don't have to double fold it. It's a single fold. They just call it a trifold. It's just a... Any spiritual questions? <laughs> yes. I'm just so, I'm so, playing, I'm kidding. So when we blow it, and we blow it, I know I do, I can speak for myself daily. Okay, who doesn't blow it? Raise your hand. <laughs> and, you, you know, we ask God for forgiveness. We go to God and we ask Him for forgiveness because we Wait. love Him. Hold on, though. We don't do that? Does the Bible tell us to ask for forgiveness? No, I'm so confused right now. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. All we have to do is acknowledge our mess up. That's it. You don't have to ask for forgiveness. That's the good news. You just have to confess and acknowledge. Okay, so let's say I'm 14 and I believe. Uh -huh. And then at 22, I go and shoot up a bunch of kids in a school. Uh -huh. But I believe, so now this guy's going to be in heaven with me? If God is a loving God, yeah. Now, you might not forgive him. But if he, if he, if that person who does that, if Adolf Hitler he went to the Father... 
if, I don't know and we don't know, if Adolf Hitler went to God and said, I blew it, and he didn't forgive him, I quit. Because that's not the God I serve. See, the God I serve says if you acknowledge your sins, it doesn't say just the bad ones. He is faithful just to forgive you and cleanse you of all righteousness. If someone is, is insane, like mentally insane, does God know? Does the Bible change for him? No, it's still the same Bible. He might not know what he's doing. I can't tell you how many people, even Charles Manson, as nutty as he is, if he ever goes to the Father and says, I believe that you are Jesus Christ, he is going to heaven. And I'll tell you what, if I'm up in heaven and Hitler is next to me on one side, and Richard Donner and all these murderers are by my side, you think I'm going to have something to say about it? Yeah. I'm not. I'm... You're not going to care! Yeah, but I wouldn't want someone to murder me. You won't even be thinking about that. That's not even going to be on your mind. It is now because you're fleshly. I know forgiveness is hard. People have mistreated you. I know. I know. But we're not the judge. It's not our responsibility to judge them. It's easy to do. But to answer your question, yeah. They will be in heaven. If they, if, if they acknowledge to the Father... If they, if they, it doesn't say believe if you're good. Right. What happens to the people that like don't like don't think Jesus is real? That what? Like don't think Messiah. Like the Jews because they're not joining Jesus as Messiah. Like, you know what's going to happen? And this is what the Bible says. An atheist. This is what the Bible says. Let me ask you a question about the Jews. All, just so you know will stand before God. But there will come a point in time when, they, when the Jews will see Jesus Christ and they will all believe because he will all put to remembrance. They'll see the marks on his hands and they will know that the one that they killed was the Messiah. Now, how about all those in those distant places that the gospel has never been? How do you know the gospel hasn't been? Have you been around for 2,000 years? Well, let's see, I've been to Africa, I've been to Uganda, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and, you, and Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe. I think each one of them has about 600 churches in that country alone. The gospel is being presented all over the world. There is not a place that the gospel hasn't been. Even in the bushes, in the bushes, in the deepest bushes, foundations goes into the bushes. The gospel goes. Now, <clears throat> what if there's that one person who never heard the gospel and they stand before God and God knows he didn't present the gospel? Are we going to know if that person's going to heaven or not? No. We don't know that. So for us to keep our mind on things that we can't comprehend or don't have all the facts is kind of a waste of energy. Because you can't do anything about it. But you ask those questions because, again, you wonder, well, what if? What if? If I'm wrong about this, what did I lose? Nothing. But if I'm right? Eternal life. So we want to go by it's what he says that's final. And if we don't know what it says, he knows we don't know. He knows what we've studied. It, you're not going to stand before him and he's not going to say to you, well, you know, you never read Jeremiah 23, 19. I'm sorry. He knows what you've read and what you have. And look, I've gone totally over and been disrespectful of your time. Any other questions before we pray out? Would you do me a favor? Can you hand this back to Pam? Have I confused any of you? Was all of it, was the message as clear? 
Now, before you came, did you question your salvation? Don't raise your hand. You know the answer. Are you clear now? If you need more passages, I have 39 more. You can sit down if you want. I mean that with all my heart. <clears throat> Do you think we come here for Wednesday and Sunday? No. How many of you call me and ask for prayer? Is it because you don't need it? Or because you don't want to bother me? Bother me. Bother me. You have my number? Do you have my number? I'm going to give it to you. On Friday nights, we have a prayer group. On the cell phone, on the phone, Fridays. If you ever need prayer, you know you can always go there. You can always call us. Someday my goal is to do this full time and irritate you seven days a week. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to work. I wish I could do this and we could have church every night. You can even bring your boy if you want. It's okay. Is he saved? Yeah. He goes to bed. Huh? He goes to bed. Oh, it's closed. To my house. Okay, I know why he goes to Barco. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Was he was he at Barco before he met you? Oh, good. So that's not it. <laughs> Listen, I went to a youth group. God put me in a youth group because my girlfriend went there. It's the only way I could see her. Where do you think I got saved? Church. He used. See, he knows. He used girl to get me to come to him. <laughs> he used music to get me here. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your faithfulness. Father, you know each and every one of us. You know the plans you have for us, the plans to prosper, and the plans for hope. We can never thank you enough for the work that you and you alone have done. We can have eternal life. Father, you know those that were having an issue with salvation or with whatever it was tonight, and we know that through your word we presented it, and we know that they have accepted the truth that we have delivered. I just ask, Father, that you continue to strengthen them, that as they go to read these books, the enemy will try and distract them by phone, by internet, by whatever it is, by neighbors. All of a sudden, distractions that didn't exist will now exist. I pray that you sanctify their time. Give them a time. Wake them up extra early. Whatever it is, that they can sit and they can read these books so they can grow in your grace and the knowledge of who you are. We thank you so much for this home and this place that we can come and the coffee and the fellowship and the love that we have for one another. Father, I thank you so much for these people's hearts. When they see that one is having a hard time and they, they all gather together, even on what you created, Facebook, and they love on her. That is what this is all about, that we love one another. And we thank you so much for this evening. And we pray that by your grace we'll be able to gather once again Sunday morning. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.